So let's talk about dopamine. Most people have heard of dopamine and we hear all the time now about dopamine hits. But actually, there's no such thing as a dopamine hit. And actually, the way that your body uses dopamine is to have a baseline level of dopamine, meaning an amount of dopamine that's circulating in your brain and body all the time. And that turns out to be important for how you feel generally, whether or not you're in a good mood, motivated, etc. And you also can experience peaks in dopamine above baseline. But if you remember nothing else from this episode, please remember this, that when you experience something or you crave something, what happens afterwards is your baseline level of dopamine drops. Okay, so these peaks in dopamine, they influence how much dopamine will generally be circulating afterward. And you might think, oh, a big peak in dopamine. After that, I'm going to feel even better because I just had this great event. Not the case. What actually happens is that your baseline level of dopamine drops. Okay, in the neuroscience literature, we refer to this as tonic and phasic release of dopamine tonic being the low level baseline that's always there circulating released into your brain all the time and then phasic these peaks that ride above that baseline and those two things interact and this is really important because dopamine has everything to do with how you feel right now as you're listening to this it has everything to do with how you will feel an hour from now has everything to do with your level of motivation and your level of desire and your willingness to push through effort. If ever you've interacted with somebody who just doesn't seem to have any drive, they've given up, or if you've interacted with somebody who seems to have endless drive and energy, what you are looking at there in those two circumstances is without question a difference in the level of dopamine circulating in their system. There will be other factors too, but the level of dopamine is the primary determinant of how motivated we are, how excited we are, how outward facing we are, and how willing we are to lean into life and pursue things. This is really important. Dopamine is a currency and it's the way that you track pleasure. It's the way that you track success. It's the way that you track whether or not you are doing well or doing poorly. And that is subjective. But if your dopamine is too low, you will not feel motivated. If your dopamine is really high, you will feel motivated. And if your dopamine is somewhere in the middle, how you feel depends on whether or not you had higher dopamine a few minutes ago or lower dopamine. This is important. Your experience of life and your level of motivation and drive depends on how much dopamine you have relative to your recent experience. This is, again, something that's just not accounted for in the simple language of dopamine hits, okay? A simple way to envision dopamine hits is every time you do something you like, you eat a piece of chocolate, dopamine hit. You look at your Instagram, dopamine hit. You see someone you like, dopamine hit. You know, all these things described as dopamine hits neglect the fact that if you scroll social media and you see something you really like, dopamine hit. Sure, there's an increase in dopamine, but then you get to something else and you go, hmm, not that interesting. However, had you arrived at that second thing first, you might think that it was really interesting. How much dopamine you experience from something depends on your baseline level of dopamine when you arrive there and your previous dopamine peaks, okay? That's super important to understand and it's completely neglected by the general language of dopamine hits. This is why when you repeatedly engage in something that you enjoy, your threshold for enjoyment goes up and up and up. So what sorts of activities, what sorts of things increase dopamine? And how much do they increase dopamine? Chocolate. They didn't look at milk versus dark chocolate, but chocolate will increase your baseline level of dopamine 1.5 times. Okay, so it's a pretty substantial increase in dopamine. It's transient, it goes away after a few minutes or even a few seconds sex both the pursuit of sex and the act of sex increases dopamine two times so it's a doubling above baseline nicotine in particular nicotine that is smoked like cigarettes and so forth increases dopamine two and a half times above baseline so if you're somebody who loves running chances are it's going to increase 
your levels of dopamine two times above your baseline. Not unlike sex. People who dislike exercise will achieve less dopamine increase or no increase in dopamine from exercise. Again, it's going to vary by your subjective experience of whether or not you enjoy that activity. Now, I've been alluding to this dopamine peaks versus dopamine baseline thing since the beginning of the episode. I talked about tonic and phasic release and so forth. But now let's really drill into what this means and how to leverage it for our own purposes. All right, let's, let's move this to modern day. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to run this marathon. I'm going to train for this marathon. Then you run the marathon and you finish you cross the finish line, you feel great. And you would think, okay, now I'm set for the entire year. I'm going to feel so much better. I'm going to feel this accomplishment in my body. It's going to be so great. That's not what happens. You might feel some of those things, but your level of dopamine has actually dropped below baseline. Now, eventually it will ratchet back up. But two things are really important. First of all, the extent to which it drops below baseline is proportional to how high the peak was. So if you cross the finish line, pretty happy, it won't drop that much below baseline afterward. If you cross the finish line ecstatic, well, a day or two later, you're going to feel quite a bit lower than you would otherwise. You might not be depressed because it depends on where that baseline was to begin with. But the so-called postpartum depression that people experience after giving birth or after some big win, a graduation or any kind of celebration, that postpartum drop in mood and affect and motivation is the drop in baseline dopamine. The behavior that most of us are familiar with of engaging in something that we really enjoy, going to a restaurant that we absolutely love or engaging in some way with some person that we really, really enjoy. But if we continue to engage in that behavior over and over again, it kind of loses its edge. It starts to kind of feel less exciting to us. Some of us, experience that drop in excitement more quickly and more severely than others, but everyone experiences that to some extent. Fortunately, there's a way to work with this such that we can constantly stay motivated, but also keep that baseline of dopamine at an appropriate healthy level. In Dr. Lemke's book, and when she was on the Huberman Lab podcast and other podcasts, she's talked about this pleasure pain balance that when we seek something that we really like, or we indulge in it, like eating a little piece of chocolate if we really like chocolate there's some pleasure but then there's a little bit of pain that exceeds the amount of pleasure and it's subtle and we experience it as wanting more of that thing okay so there's a pleasure pain balance and i'm telling you that the pleasure and the pain are governed by dopamine to some extent well how could that be right i said before when you engage in an activity or when you ingest something that increases dopamine, the dopamine levels go up, you know, to a substantial degree with all the things I listed off. Where's the pain coming from? Well, the pain is coming from the lack of dopamine that follows. And you now know what that lack of dopamine reflects. And now it should make perfect sense why if you take something or do something that leads to huge increases in dopamine, Afterward, your baseline should drop because there isn't a lot of dopamine around to keep your baseline going. 